All right, this lesson is on dot plots and box plots and how to graph things using those two different plots. So the first one we're going to look at is a dot plot. And so it says Rosie asked students in the lunch line how many books they had in their backpacks. They recorded the data as a list 26104422. And they're asking us to make a dot plot of that data. So for a dot plot, the first thing that you want to do is create a number line. And on that number line, you want it to go from your smallest value to your largest value. So our smallest value is 0, and our largest is 6. And you should not skip any values. So you, the, one of the most common mistakes I see my students make is they just put um, 0, 1, 2, 4, 6. And so they skip three and they skip five because it's not in the data set. But on your number line, you need to put all of the numbers. So we start with zero, and then we have one. I shouldn't say put all of the numbers. I mean, don't skip any numbers. Three, four, five, and six. So don't just put the numbers that are in your data set. Put all the numbers from the smallest to the largest and everything in between. And so for a dot plot, what you're going to do is above each number, you're going to put a dot for how many times that number occurs. And sometimes you'll see a dot or you'll see an X here. Could be either one. So there's one zero in our data set, so I would put one dot above the zero. And again, it could be a dot or it could be an X here. For the number one, I have two of those in my data set, so I'm going to put two dots. For the number two, I have three of those, so one, two, three. And you can see how I'm kind of lining these up to make it look cleaner and easier to see what's going on with your data set. For three, I don't have any, so I don't put any dots there. For four, I have two of them. For five, I don't have any. And for six, I just have one. So the point of any plot is it's just another way to visualize your data instead of just looking at a list of numbers. So like you could look at this and see, okay, most of my numbers are between zero and two. Most of my numbers are here. There's this six, and that's kind of an outlier. It's out there on the outside, doesn't really fit with the rest of it. And I have two fours, and it's kind of interesting that there's no threes there, but it just gives you a different representation of your data instead of just looking at a list of numbers. And that's what all plots are for, plots or graphs, just a different way to look at your data set. All right, so that's a data or a dot plot. So let's move on to a box plot. Um, a lot of times people think that box plots are really complicated, but they're, they're very simple, actually. Um, so, box plots years ago used to be called box and whisker plots. I don't see the whisker part so much anymore. Typically, they're, they're now just called box plots. And so, I'm gonna, just going to take you through the steps in how to create a box plot. So, the first thing that you should do is put your data in order from least to greatest. And so, this, this is actually where a lot of students make mistakes. So I'm going to try hard not to make any mistakes here. So the smallest number is 26, and then I see a 28, and then 32, and then let's see 235. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is I'm writing these directly below the other numbers. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I don't make a mistake and miss a number. So if I get to the end of this and I don't have anything to go here, then I know I made a mistake. So you can either do what I'm doing or you can just cross them off as you use them. But you want to make sure that you end up with all the numbers in your data set. Really common mistake for a student to miss a, a number in there. So I had 235 and then I have a 38. Eight. And this is actually harder than you would think. Putting a number where you think, oh, that's simple. Well, it's really easy to make a mistake here. 
and again, I'm, I'm actually going to cross these off because I'm having trouble keeping track of what I've used. So this is another method. Um, there were three, were there three 35s? Uh, well, there you go. See, I put three 35s in my list here, and there were only two of I knew I wasn't doing very well. So learn from my mistakes. So then 38, and then 45, cross that up, and then 49, and then 51, 53, and 55. So 51, 1, 53. And 55. All right. So again, don't take that for granted. That's a really easy place to make a mistake there, as you saw me do. So step number one is put the data in order from least to greatest. And the reason we did that is because we're going to find the median. And so I had a link up in the upper right-hand corner for finding the median. If you're not sure how to find the median, you can go watch that video. But I'm going to go over it here real quick. The median is the middle number. So to find the middle number, all I'm going to do is just cross these off from the outside, working my way in until I find the number that's in the middle. And sometimes there's two numbers in the middle. And if there's two, then you would add them and divide by two. In this case, there's just one number in the middle. So that middle number, the median, is 38. So that's the first thing you want to find in a box and whisker plot is find the median. And the median is just the number in the middle of your data set. And the key is you have to have your numbers in order from least to greatest. So common mistake is for students to forget to put the numbers in order from least to greatest. So that's the first value that I need. And you're going to see that there are five values I need to create a box plot. There's the first one, the median. All right, so let's look at the next one. The next one, so here's my data set in order from least to greatest, and here's my median. The next one is to find what's called the lower quartile. And the lower quartile is simply the median of the lower half. All right, so this is my lower half over here, and now I'm just going to find the median of that. So I just cross these off. Dump. And there's my median of the lower half, which is 32. So that's called the lower quartile. We abbreviate that as LQ. And that's equal to 32. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the upper half. And so I cross these off. And I end up with 51. So I told you there's five values that you need. And so now we have three of those values. We have the median, we have the lower quartile, and the upper quartile. Basically, what we've done is found three medians. So we found the median of the whole data set. That split the data in half. And then we found the, sorry about that. We found the median of the lower half and the median of the upper half. That's our lower quartile and upper quartile. So we only have two values left to find. And these are actually the easiest values. So the last two values we need are the least and the greatest. And so we'll just simply 26 and 55, the least and the greatest values. So to create a box plot, you need the least, the greatest. You need the median, which is in the middle, and then the median of the lower half and the median of the upper half. And that's it. So now we just have to graph those. And so to graph those, what you do is you draw a number line. And our data here goes from 26 to 55. Um, so I'm going to start with, so unlike a dot plot, you can skip values here. So I'm going to start with 25, and I'm just going to count by fives. So 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and 55. So. I'll keep going just because I put those lines there, but you really don't need that. So 75. You should have at least 
five segments so that your data is not all squished together. All right. So at least five, I would say. So don't put 25 and then count by, uh, let's see, 20 by through. I mean, you could count by tens, but this is going to look nicer. It's more spread out. You definitely don't want to put 25 and then count by 20s. All right. So now all we do is after we've got our number line, now we just plot the five values we found. So the first value, or okay, we'll start with the first value. The first value we found was the median. So we're going to start with the median, and all I'm going to do is put a dot above the number line where 38 would be. So 38 would be right here. All right. Then I'm going to put a dot, so we'll go with the lower quartile. So lower quartile is at 32. So I'm going to put a dot there at 32. The upper quartile was 51. So it's just a little past 50. So 51 is about there. The least was 26. Let's put a dot at 26. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. And then the largest or greatest value was 55. All right. So now... Once we've got those five values, now you got to know what a, a box and whisker or a box plot looks like. So this is what it looks like. So in the middle here with these dots, we create a box. So this is where the box part comes from. And then we just put a line through this. So remember, this is our median. This is our median of the lower half or the lower quartile. And this is the median of the upper half or the upper quartile. And then here's where the whisker part comes in, if it's called a box and whisker. So you put lines out here with that. And so that's what a box and whisker plot looks like. Um, one, one quick thing here. There's something called the interquartile range, or the IQR. And so the... If you're asked to calculate the interquartile range, all it is is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Let's label these real quick. So, so you have this. So that point there represents the least. This point here represents the greatest. Again, I told you these really aren't that bad. This is the median. So look, those values are really easy to find. The smallest, the biggest, the middle value. And then these, this is your, I don't know what are you, it's your lower quartile, which is just simply the median of your lower half. And this is the upper quartile, which is the median of this half. So the interquartile range is how spread out this box is. It's the difference between your upper quartile and your lower quartile. So our upper quartile was 51 and our lower quartile was 32. So to find the interquartile range, what we do is take UQ minus LQ, or upper quartile minus lower quartile, that's 32. So 51 minus 32, and we get 19. All right, now one important thing, and this is, I don't know, drawing it, a lot of people think that's the most important thing, but this is more important. The median splits your data in half. All right, so half of your data is over here. The other half of your data is to the left of the median. Okay, the data, the median splits your data in half. The lower quartile splits that half in half. So you have half your data over here, and then this is another median, so you're splitting your data again. So what does that mean? That means that 25% of your data is between these two points. And 25% of your data is between those points. So to the left of here, this is 50% of the data. 50% of the values in your data set are less than 38. The other 50% are greater than 38. So again, median splits it in half, so half my data is over here. 
the upper quartile splits that in half. And so it's the same thing over here. 25% is here and 25% is here. So you might be asked a question that says 75% of your data is greater than what? Okay, well look at this point right here. The lower quartile is 32. 75% of my data is greater than that. 75% of my data is less than that. If I look at the median, 50% is less, 50% is greater. Again, think about it. The median splits your data in half. So this is half of your data, right? Half of your data points are over here, and half of them are over here. And then this lower quartile is just the median of that half, so it splits it again. So then you have a quarter here and a quarter here. All right, so you could say 25% of my data is greater than the upper quartile, which is 51. So 25% is greater than 51. 75% of my data is less than the upper quartile. So that's the point of a box plot is it breaks your data into these three sections. And in each section is 25% of your data. All right, so I hope that was helpful. If so, give it a like and a subscribe, and please feel free to leave me a comment. I'm always looking to improve. Until next time.